to this meeting of Breck Road Baptist Church. We're thankful that you're here and the Lord's given us an opportunity to be yet together this morning. Let's begin in the word of prayer and ask God's blessing upon the meeting. Let's pray. Almighty God, we come before thee and thank thee that thou art a good God, that thou dost hear and answer prayer, and Lord, that thou art an ever-present help in time of need. We praise thee that, Father, we do not come and worship a God who doesn't hear, but Lord, thou art very near to us. We pray, Father, this morning that Thou wilt please draw our attention to Thy Word. Speak to us and help us to glorify Thee. We pray that our worship would bring glory to Thee. We pray that Thou wilt reveal things in our life that must change in order, Lord, that we might be made more into Thine own image. We pray, Father, for our old man to be put to death and our new man, Lord, to live. And if there be any, Lord, that are here, and there will be those who are here and those who are watching via live stream, who are lost and in their sin, and yet without Thee, we pray, O oh Lord, please, we pray, save them. Open up their heart and mind, and may they see their need of a Savior. Please do a mighty, mighty work. We, we need Thy grace and help. Father, we pray that Thou will continue to bless the work here, and continue to guide us and help us to honor and please Thee in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So take your hymn books. We'll stand and sing our first hymn this morning. Hymn number 22. Hymn number 22, we'll stand and sing. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries, may Jesus Christ be praised. Alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair, may Jesus Christ be praised. Let's stand and sing hymn number 22. This morning, we'll just take a few moments here to begin our meeting with a word of praise. Perhaps there's something good that God has done in your heart and life this week that you'd like to 
share with us something, a praise that you'd like to share, even just from where you're seated. Does anybody at all have a praise they'd like to share? Yes, Sil- Sylvia. Definitely. Uh, we praise the Lord for that. It was a wonderful uh, day, a wonderful week of camp, and the Lord blessed in many ways. We had wonderful weather. Many of our children went down and responded uh, as the pre- to the preaching of God's Word. So really pray for young people um, that came to know the Lord as their Savior, and that as they go back to our church and also to other churches, they'll continue to, to grow and they'll follow the Lord uh, and trust Him. So that would be wonderful. Very good. Anybody else have a praise? Yes, Sandy. Uh, my sister gave birth to baby boy on huh. 25th. Uh, Great, praise the Lord. She went through a very difficult situation, and baby was also drank amniotic fluid, and uh, it was very crucial situation, like you know, plus or minus situation. But uh, with, by God's grace, uh, both mother and uh, baby are safe, and uh, they are happy. Good, praise the Lord. Well, that's. And, uh, my wife is also giving early birth, so she might give in this week or next week. We don't wow. Know. God's okay, definitely. Well, let's pray for, continue to pray for Sandy. Praise the Lord. His sister um, gave a safe delivery, the baby and the mother okay, and pray for his wife who's back in India, that the Lord will give her a safe delivery as well. That would be wonderful. Well, we continue to pray for you. Very good. Anybody else have a, a praise, something they'd like to share? Yes, Danielle. Amen. Well, let's continue to pray for that. We have been praying for Paul and Danielle and their housing situation. And that we praise the Lord that he's uh, provided this, uh, the mortgage. And now we're just waiting on solicitors who never act as quick as you'd like for them to act. So pray for Paul and Danielle. And let's pray that this new home will be a great blessing for them. And that all the paperwork will go through as, as needed. That would be great. It's good to have them back from the holiday as well. Very good. Anybody else have a, a praise? Yes, Rose. Yes, Peter. I have an encouraging medical result about the decision. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, praise the Lord for that. It's good to have Peter and the crew from uh, Norris Green here with us this morning. And uh, Laura's unwell. Uh, She's in the hospital at the moment. Um, She's been there for a few days now. And I was able to see her this morning. I continue to pray for her, but it's good to have um, Peter and, and, um, and the group from Norris Green were praying, praying for that work, praying for that church, and uh, it's wonderful to hear the good report that he's, the health, the health report, that things are better than perhaps he ex- expected, so we give God the glory for that. Uh, Rosie, I think I saw your hand go up. Well, we praise the Lord for that. Usually our trip home from Camp Victory takes about five hours because for whatever reason, traffic on the M6 piles up on the Friday of camp. Um, but we're thankful that that didn't happen. Dr. Jenny uh, was able to, I sat call her doctor. She was the camp doctor this week. And she's actually a doctor, but was also the camp doctor. Um, but Jenny's actually the one who the Lord sort of uh, led her to look up the route. And she said, that you're going to be stuck in loads of traffic. And so we were able to divert our buses a different way before they got on the road. And we give God the glory for that and uh, thankful for all those who were able to help from the pack lunches to the driving and all of it, the praying, the Lord really blessed in the week. Yes, Christine. Just wanted to add to that, about to say that the, the kids on our bus, they made the journey pleasant because they, a lot of the way home, they just sang, they just mm. sang the hymns that they weren't in camp and it was, it was absolutely lovely to yeah. hear them. No prompting, no, you know, they just, and they were all so well behaved. Mm. Yeah, but to hear them singing those songs that they've learned, it was touching. Amen. Yeah. Well, we praise the Lord for that. It's always a blessing to hear uh, the young people singing um, hymns. Yeah, they could have an option to listen to all sorts of music, but they would rather sing hymns on the bus ride home from the church camp, and that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. So let's continue to pray for our young people that the Lord will, will help them. It was encouraging as well for just for Camp Victory. We had young people who had went this year, that had been coming to our Sunday school for 
probably four or five years and they've never been able to go to camp. They maybe started attending when they were four and they always heard us announce it and they never could go. Maybe they had older siblings who were able to go and they couldn't go. And this year was some of their first years ever being able to go. So it's amazing to see those who stick on for you know, two, three, four years and are now able to go to camp. And uh, it was a huge, huge encouragement and a blessing uh, to see that. Yes, Joy. Definitely. It's a huge help and a, bit of a blessing for those who are um, able to help pitch in in various different ways um, to help go down to camp. There's always obviously a lot that goes on. 200 children on property, another uh, 50 to 60 plus workers that were on property as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a big event and um, a lot that goes on. And it's always helpful that Joe and I can go down early and be there as well as um, Rosie as well. So I'm thankful for all those who sort of stepped up and drove and help make lunches and do all those things. Uh, it's just a, a blessing to be able to work together. And I want to say as well, I'm thankful to all those who helped make it possible. We had several children who this year couldn't afford to pay even the deposit for camp. And some people agreed to pay their entire camp. And, and that, that we were able to send them there because of that. And so I know specifically of three that went last week that were in that situation that, that couldn't have gone had that not have happened. And so it's just a blessing to be able to see that go forward. So we praise the Lord for that. Very good. Anybody else? I don't want to miss anyone. Anybody else have a, a praise? Something they'd like to share? Yes, June. Um, I want to praise God for answering your prayers over my friend Colette. Yeah. She thought she had breast cancer. Hmm. And when she went for a biopsy, it was benign. Oh, great. So. Ah, praise the Lord for that. That's good. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. It's good to have you in the meeting. And that's okay. No problem. Uh, very good. Anybody else have a praise? Something I'd like to share? I'll share a personal praise for me. It was a blessing to have both Zoe and Santiana go down and help this week at camp as the workers in training, or they call them wit workers. And uh, Santiana shared her Christian testimony on, what was it, Tuesday night? And uh, the Lord really used that in a great way. And thanking last year, she came and came to know the Lord at camp. And uh, this year, she was sharing her Christian testimony there. And the Lord used it in the hearts and lives of many young people. And uh, we give God, God the glory for that. It's also a good blessing to take down Sylvia and Jacob and Jenny and uh, other workers who are able to go down and help with us. And uh, Elijah even was able to enjoy camp as a day camper and uh, did a wonderful job. So we're thankful, thankful for that and all the help that went down. Okay, I think that is that all the praises. I don't want to miss anybody. Anybody have something they'd like to share? Okay. Well, this morning I've got something here with me that I brought for my object lesson. As a matter of fact, it's something that usually most people carry with them. Any young person know what this is? Schofield, what is this? Sorry, Ooh, Casper. A phone. That's right. It's not just a phone, but it is a smartphone. And don't you know that smartphones now, people are becoming more and more weary of them because they log so much of your data that companies can buy your information and begin to put up adverts on your social media or whatever it is based off your phone. Because your phone is, most people keep their phone with them all the time and it listens and it watches and it, it, it records all of your activity. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? I can talk about um, I might be next door talking about the windows we need in the ministry hall and all of a sudden on my phone pops up adverts for windows. It's very interesting how that, that happens. 
Well, people, because of their phone, their phone's with them all, their time, all the time, they get very weary, don't they, about the phone tracking their information. So people, sometimes people go on and they change all the settings so that you can turn off your data or you can turn off the way that your phone can track your activity for, via some of the apps and other things. Some people go all together and they say, look, I don't want to have that. I don't want my information being stolen by people. So they do very specific things. They say, I'm not going to have a smartphone anymore. I'm going to go back to a dumb phone and have a dumb phone that doesn't do any smart things because I don't want it tracking my behavior or perhaps some people during COVID you knew that your phone was being tracked so maybe if you wanted to go out you just left your phone at home because you didn't want nobody anybody to know where you were going. It's very interesting how when people think that people are listening in they begin to change their behavior don't they? They begin to think well ooh, I got to be careful because somebody might be watching or somebody might be listening. But can I tell you that before a smartphone was ever invented and all the abilities and features that it has to track your data, do you know that there was someone already who is with you all the time who knows every thought and every word and every action you ever do? And his name is God. The Bible tells us that God is, um, he is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. You, you cannot go anywhere where God is not. Now, if you're worried about how you behave when you think maybe somebody is watching or listening your phone, should it not worry us a bit more that there's an almighty God who's going to judge everything we've ever done in this life who is watching us? And yet most people carry on and live and act the way they want to. They give no reverence to God. Why? Because they do not think about God. Psalm 139 tells us this, and I just want to read it to you. I've read it before. O Lord, in verse number one, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassed my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. For such knowledge is too wonderful me, for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. That's interesting, isn't it? David said, I cannot go anywhere where God is not. You may go somewhere sometime, and you may begin to do something that's naughty. You may, your mom and dad may not be there. Your teacher may not be there, and you may be all on your own, and you may think, I have freedom. I can do whatever I want to, but I want you to remember, you cannot get away from God. God sees your heart. He sees your thoughts. He knows your actions. You cannot hide from God. So as people begin to adjust because they're afraid their phone is listening to them, may we begin to think about our life and think there's an almighty God who knows everything. And may that impact the way that we live. Can I tell you that even that the Lord Jesus made a way for you to have your sins forgiven and for you to be able to please Him if you'll come to Him and know Him as Lord and Savior. And then as a believer, we're to live a life that is pleasing and honoring to God, consciously in His presence. Very good. Well, you did a great job listening. Are there any young people that might have a memory verse for today? I don't want to put any pressure on any young people, but maybe there are a few. Very good. We'll see. Julie, do you have a memory verse for today? Very good. Well done. Very good. And Schofield.
Very good. Well done. That verse was quoted a few times this week. Yes, Sco uh, Casper. Sorry. The Lord giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy, but the, the, to the sinner he giveth to a veil to gather and, <coughs> and to keep all as he may give. Ecclesiastes. Wow, very good. That was a long verse. Ecclesiastes is not one that's quoted often. That's great. Very good. Anybody else? I don't want to miss anyone. Okay, well, if you said a verse, uh, be sure to let me know afterwards, and I will have a suite for you. If you're on your way, on your way in, I hope you grabbed the notice sheet, and uh, we'll go over that, just a few things going on in the life and ministry of our church, some things to pray about moving forward. Very good. Well, please continue to pray for uh, work being done next door and continue to pray for the ministry hall. A lot of things are being done and the Lord has continued to meet all of our needs there. So please keep that in prayer. All of the skirting board in the coving is now up in the architrave. And so God willing, um, we'll begin to make our way downstairs to begin putting those things on and almost to the point now where things can be painted upstairs. So that's an encouraging thing. Continue to keep that um, in your prayers. Also, please keep in prayer this week, God willing, a little bit of a hiccup with the roofing company. Um, they've been very busy, and so they've not, they weren't able to come last week, but they have said for sure they will be here this week. We'll see if that happens. Praying it does. Um, thankfully, we were able to keep our, uh, our equipment um, in the back of the, the church dry uh, by putting up tablecloths and various things over the sound desk. When we came in today, there was about a jug full of water in the chair um, but thankfully, the Lord kept all of our equipment dry. So we praise God for that. And hopefully, soon, we'll have a roof over this building, and that, or a good roof over this building. We have one. It's just a bit holy, and uh, not holy in the sense that the Lord is pleased with it. Very good. Um, continue to pray as well uh, for, for various things. This week is our teen week at camp, and um, we have about 20-plus young people from our church that will be going down. So please continue to pray that the Lord will work in their hearts. We have several young people going down for their first time. And lost young people, many of them are lost. And so uh, we're asking the Lord to really work in their heart. Um, let's continue to keep Laura in our prayers. I was able to meet with her this morning before the service and um, see her. She's in the Royal. And uh, she had a, a fall on Thursday that was a bit scary for her. And she became quite dizzy and disoriented and was taken immediately to the hospital and they have kept her there to try to figure out what exactly is going on. They, they don't think it's necessarily a heart problem, but they do need to settle out why she's so dizzy. So please do pray for her. And uh, we're able to have a time of prayer there. She wants to be in church and wants to be around other believers. So please do keep her in prayer. Pray for the work there at Norris Green. And um, we're asking the Lord uh, to, to continue to help and um, praying that God willing, all of the paperwork and things that are needed to go through for that work to continue will happen and uh, bless those who are, are there and keeping the doors open. Uh, let's also continue to pray. Uh, it's hard to believe we're praying for this now, but Team Liverpool coming up in the month of September. We're only uh, one month away from getting our new group of Crown Hall workers. They're already beginning to prep, plan and make their way to come over. So please begin to pray and ask the Lord to really uh, bless those workers and give us just the ones that He wants us to have. Praying for Team, Liver uh, Team Liverpool. Um, let's also continue to pray for the work in uh, Crowborough that, God willing, will be starting at the end of this month. I think it is the end of this month. It's August. Uh, it's not August yet. It'll be August tomorrow. And so beginning at the end of August, um, there will be a new church plant beginning. And Carl and Charmaine Hauser, who spent a good amount of time here uh, keeping the work open while Joy and I were away, are going to be leading that work. And so let's pray for the work in Crowborough and ask the Lord to bless that, that time. Um, also, if you're able to come, the Heritage Bible Conference is coming up this month. And at the end of the month, I believe the dates are the 25th, 26th, and 27th. And so if you're able to come, uh, that's going to be down at Crown Hall. 
you're able to find your own accommodation. Uh, there's different hotels and various things that are recommended around the area. And then all of the events and the meals will all be held at the Crown Hall property. And so if you're able to come, I know many have already signed up to go. It'll be a blessed time. My pastor will be there preaching, Pastor Sexton. And uh, also, God willing, Brother William McRae will be there. And so we're asking the Lord to, to really meet with us in a special way um, as, they, as we come together. Believers will be coming from all over the country uh, to gather together. We've had people booking already from uh, Wales, England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, coming in to, to, to be around God's Word and be challenged. So plan to be there. It'll be a wonderful time. It'll be a little bit like Camp Victory for adults or for the family. And so uh, you won't be staying in a tent, don't worry. You'll have a little better food than camp food, though camp food is nice. Um, but it will be a time to enjoy one another's company and fellowship and, uh, and be encouraged. Plus, you'll get to see uh, many of the workers from the various churches that come through every once in a while. They'll be there, and it'll be an encouraging time. I know you won't want to miss that. Um, let's continue to pray as well for, for some other things and continue to keep uh, different people um, in our prayers and our work. Pray for the work at Lower Kingswood and... David, David and Rhoda Vilsius, and they're leading the work there. Uh, let's also continue to pray for expectant mothers, Gracie Heaton, Juliana Moreland, and Ashley Gillett. All of them are there working at camp at the moment, so please do keep them in your prayers. And keep Jacob in your prayers. Jacob's back in the sound booth. He's got a job interview, God willing, this, uh, this Tuesday in Manchester. Very important interview. He's going to be traveling up from camp to be there and so please keep Jacob in your prayers and ask the Lord to really give him favor. If this be the Lord's will, that the Lord will give him favor in this interview, and it will be used of, of the Lord to be a great help to meet all of his needs. There are other things coming up. Uh, God willing, we're going to go back to visitation on Saturday the 13th. If you're able to be here, there will be a church-wide visitation at 10 a.m. to 1230. And then we'll be doing follow-up visits again starting on the 16th of August on a Tuesday at half at 5:30. So if you're able to be there, that'll be wonderful, and I would love to have your help. There are a lot of other things that are going on. We won't go through them all, but if you're able to come and be a part of these various different things, please let us know. I want to remind you, we are still trying to hit our goal and our budget of 20,000 pounds in six months, and we're only 2,500 pounds away from being there. So uh, continue to pray that the Lord will help us meet that goal, and uh, we're asking God for His help and His grace. Uh, to get there. And we're still trying to pay on to the ministry hall um, what the loan that we were given by, by a, a lovely Christian businessman, and we want to pay that back. And also, just keep this in mind as well, that coming up, God willing, in the month of September is Je uh, Jenny and Philip's wedding, and it's a real privilege to be able to have. That'll be our first wedding, and they want to use the ministry hall for their reception. Now, you may have been very fussy, perhaps, in your wedding. You may have wanted everything just right, I could think of probably about 100 other places around Liverpool that would look much nicer than our ministry hall, but they want to have it there because of their burden for the work and the witness it is. And so uh, please help, um, pray about helping with us. God willing, in the next couple weeks, we're going to have several more work days there. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. We need to level the floor, lay down carpet, paint. Um, and there's, there's just, we had a big work day already, but we have several more that need to be done before that wedding, and also before we start up our mums and tots and our English classes again. So if you're able to come and help, please plan to be there, and it will take a sacrifice on all of our parts. Um, I, I can think of a lot of other things I could be doing on a Saturday or some of those days, but these kind of things must be done, and it won't be like this forever, but we definitely need people to, to, to be able to sacrifice some time and go over and help. Many hands makes light work, and uh, this is a great privilege the Lord's given to our church. So if you're able to be there to help, uh, please do come on over, and we will put a power tool in your hand and let you go to work on the building, um, if it's safe. So that would be great. That's all the notices and announcements I have. If you have any other announcements, please let me know, and I'll be sure to make those announcements in the, the following meetings. But let's, uh, we'll make ready to receive our tithes and offerings. I'd like to ask um, Andy to come along, and, um, and Mr. David, if you wouldn't mind, to come along to receive our tithes and offerings. And uh, let's continue to remember the Lord. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And um, this morning as we come to God's Word, we'll be looking at this, but it's a privilege. It's an act of worship to give. And I, I know that sometimes we don't like it. Sometimes people feel like churches talk about money. I want you to know I very, I, though it's a, it's a blessing to give, 
I do not care, and I don't go back and look at how much people give. I have literally no idea. But I know that it's an, an act of worship to God. The Lord has given us so much. The Lord Jesus gave His own life for you and for me. And so it's only our uh, privilege and, and, and blessing to be able to give back to His work. And so let's continue to give and give faithfully. And um, I'd like to ask David, if you wouldn't mind, to please uh, pray over the gifts we're about to receive. You can take your Bibles and turn with me to the New Testament book of Matthew, the New Testament book of Matthew, chapter number 6. We'll begin in verse number 1 of Matthew, chapter 6, and we'll read all the way down to verse number 4. 
This is the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord Jesus preaching. The largest portion of Scripture of the Lord speaking we have in, the, in, in Scripture. Matthew chapter number 6, beginning in verse number 1. The Word of God says, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And we'll stop our reading just there in verse number 4. And may the Lord add His blessing to the reading of His Word. Hold your place there, and we will come back to that portion of Scripture here in just a few moments. Let's take our Bibles, sorry, our hymn books once more and stand and sing hymn number 452. Hymn number 452. Where He may lead me, I will go, for I have learned to trust Him so. And I remember t'was for me that he was slain on Calvary. Let's stand and sing hymn number 452. second verse. Oh, I delight in His command, love to be led. take our Bibles and turn back to Matthew chapter number 6. In Matthew chapter number 6 this morning, and with God's help, we'll look at this passage. Let me look at it again, and we'll just read four verses. And again, it's just a very short portion of Scripture. Really, verses, verse chapter, chapter number 6 takes a different turn in the Sermon on the Mount. All of it beautifully strung together. The Lord Jesus, the divine preacher, making application to the hearts and minds of those who are listening. In Matthew 6, verse number 1, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of men. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. 
For verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not the left hand know what the right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. As we come to this portion of Scripture, I want to draw your attention in verse number 1, a phrase that we find there, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. We'll stop our reading just there. In the Beatitudes, and sorry, in the Sermon on the Mount, we have the Lord Jesus speaking. We find in chapter 5, the sermon really begins, beginning in verse number 3, and through verse number 12, we have what is called the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes really describe the, the, what a true Christian is, what it means to be a believer. We come to chapter 5 and verses number 13, we see how this believer, this converted person, is experiencing the world and how the world is reacting to them. You'll remember in verse 13, the Lord Jesus says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. He goes on to say, Ye are the light of the world. He commands them in verse 16, Let your light so shine before them, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. When we come to chapter 5 and verses 17 through 48, really, we see how the Christian is to respond to the law of God. And how the law of God is to have a place in the life of a believer. And then when we come to chapter number 6, in this great sermon the Lord Jesus preached, we find a, a, a great change taking place. And really, it is taking the place to the believer now and, and living in the presence of God, in submission to God, and in the dependence upon God. It is showing that essential relationship between the believer and the Father. The Lord Jesus said in John 15, Without me ye can do nothing. It is impossible to bear fruit. It is impossible to live the Christian life without dwelling in the presence of God. Without your soul being nourished by His Word without communion that you can have with Him in prayer. It is absolutely so essential. But I'm going to be honest with you. As you become, come to chapter number 6, and you truly begin to listen to this passage, and you begin to apply it to your own heart, it can get quite painful as you listen to it. Because it is as if the Lord is saying, I'm going to cut through all the dross of your life, all of the exterior things at the moment, and I want to get right to the heart of the matter. Oftentimes, when we, someone asks us if we are a believer, we may point to a time when we are a believer, but oftentimes we point to other things as well, exterior things that show our evidence that we are a believer. And the Lord cuts through all of that here in this passage because you had a group of religious people that seemed to have everything exterior right, exteriorly right, but interiorly they were corrupt. They were whited sepulchers. They were pretty on the outside but filthy on the inside. And so I challenge you this morning with God's help, examine your own self. Don't look to the person next to you and point the finger at them. Don't begin to think, well, this passage could really apply to so-and-so. I wish they were here. This would be a great help. No, this morning, this one applies to you and to me. Examine your own selves. In this passage, we find the Lord Jesus says, Take heed that you do not take your alms before men to be seen of them. You see, the overwhelming theme of this passage is that you and I, if we are truly converted, we've been born again by God's Spirit, then the Lord challenges us here to engage in acts of righteousness out of a desire to please God and not out of a desire to be seen of men. If we are to 
our Christian life, if we're to have a Christian life that is pleasing to the Lord, that is honoring to the Lord, then we are to engage in our acts of righteous living, holy living, service. All of that is to flow out of a desire to please God and not out of a desire to please men. If it is out of a desire to please men, the Lord gives a very stern warning. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. I say this is painful because it cuts to the heart really of every believer. This morning we can identify ourselves as believers that there is a real battle that takes place, isn't there? A struggle that takes place and we can identify how easy it is to get caught up in the desire to please men at the expense of pleasing the Lord. We have a responsibility in this passage. We'll look at this passage in a few different ways, but I want you to notice in verse number one, we have a responsibility as believers to keep, keep this balance of Christian living. It sounds a bit contradictory if you go back to Matthew chapter number 5. In Matthew chapter number 5, the Bible says, Let your light, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In Matthew chapter 5, the Lord is saying here that your Christian life is to shine, to live like a light bulb so bright that others can look into your life and they will glorify God in your life. They will recognize that there is something different about you. And so we see in verse chapter 5 and verse number 16 that we're commanded to let our light shine. We're commanded to live righteously that others may see our life and be pointed to the Savior. But in Matthew chapter number 6, it takes a different turn. It sounds almost contradictory. Take heed that you do not take your alms before men to be seen of them, Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. That idea there of taking alms, I have as a, a note, though that's not inspired, the, the notes aren't inspired in your Bible, the words of God's are, of course, but I have a little note in my Bible here that says the word alms is equivalent to the word righteousness. Righteousness. And so we see here, you could say it this way, take heed that you do not your alms or righteous acts before men. Now, there's a great battle there, isn't there? We're to let our light shine. We're to live in a way that's pleasing to the Lord so that others can see Christ. But we do not do it so that we can gain men's favor. So that we can be rewarded by men. And that is the responsibility. We're to live in holiness to the Lord, to please the Lord, and that in essence is to shine brightly, but we're not to live in a way to please men. By living in a way to please the Lord, our light shines and therefore brings glory to God. But when we live in such a way because we want man's approval, we want men to notice our good deeds, we want men to see our righteous acts, then your reward is simply this, man's praise. Man's praise. And man's praise is very empty, isn't it? Man's praise is only temporal, whereas God's praise is eternal. The responsibility of the believer is to live this balance. To live in such a way that your life shines, but also not to live in a way where you are seeking the praise of men. The battle really that you and I face then is a battle of whether we're going to please ourselves or we are going to please God. That's the battle that's really fa we're fighting. Again, look at this verse. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. In verse number four, thine alms may be in secret that thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. You could say here that what is being decided is that our that the emphasis of the passage is really an emphasis of whether you are self-gratifying or you are desiring to be pleasing to the Lord. And as Christians, it's very easy, it's very easy to cloak our righteous acts 
and allow our, to cloak our righteous acts as righteousness when really they are selfish desires. When really they're motivated by selfish ambitions in our own heart. And as a Christian, if you've been a believer for any length of time, you know that this can be the case. Because sometimes we're tempted to act in such a way because we feel that it's our responsibility to somebody else. We act in such a way. We do an act of kindness. We, we deny ourselves. We make ourselves uncomfortable. We go out of our way to help somebody because we don't want anybody else to think badly of us. We don't want anybody to think that we're not willing. We, we don't want anybody to think that that, that we're not able to give or we want people to see that we are willing to go out of our way. And therefore, that righteous act that has every attribute, it, it's self-denying, it's, it's giving of your time, your energy, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing, but where did it go wrong? Your desire came because you cared about, you did it because you cared about what people thought of you and not out of a heart to please the Lord. And that happens with all of us, doesn't it? We, we allow our motive to be just shifted slightly. And that's all that Satan wants is just to be slightly off. Because when you operate in the Christian life and you do what you do, whatever it may be, because it is out of a concern of what men may say about you, then you are missing the mark of doing it out of the desire to please the Lord. Oftentimes we say, well, it's for our testimony's sake. It's for our name's sake. Can I tell you, you won't have to worry about your testimony if your constant concern is about whether or not you're pleasing the Lord. Your testimony will sort itself out if you're consciously living and thinking, am I pleasing God? Sometimes we can give because we, we, can, we can give and we can seem like we're sacrificing because we want influence with people. We want to be the person that everybody comes to. We want to lift our name up. And so our, our sacrifices look like we're really giving. It looks like we're really going out of our way. But really what we're trying to do is get our vine and our webs and our tentacles into the lives of others so that we become the ones that people worship. We become the ones that people are coming to. And that is nothing less than self-elevation, self-worship. And it is so deceiving because it enters into the life of a Christian. And that was what was happening in the Pharisees. And that's what happens in your life and my life. When we act in a way out of a desire, we do what we do because we want to please man at the expense of pleasing God. And it is so deceiving because it can look, it can look like we are spiritual. If I can make it very blunt, I can preach uh, on, a, on a Sunday morning. I can preach on a Sunday night. I can, I'm God willing preaching a, week, a day at Camp Victory. And if my whole goal of preaching is for what people will say after the sermon, if anybody will pat me on the back and say, well done, and that's a temptation we all face, if that's my goal, I could preach a, a sermon and it have absolutely no heavenly reward. Why? Because I did it out of a desire to please men and not please God. You see, the Lord Jesus here was making it, he was trying to show such a distinction between following Christ and the, the, Jew, the, the false religion of the Pharisees. And he says here, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them, otherwise you have no reward. You can teach a Sunday school class, class and have no reward. You can drive a minibus and have no reward. You can have a life full of service. And have absolutely no reward. Why? Because you did it out of a desire to please man. The Bible tells us that you and I are, you and I are building a house in two Corinthians. And sorry, in one Corinthians chapter number three. And that one day God is recording every aspect of our life. He's looking at your life and my life. And our life is going to be pushed through that wonderful fire of God's judgment as believers. And the Bible says here 
Now, if any man, in verse number 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, if any man build up on this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. Think about that. The Lord is talking here to the believers. He says, every single one of you are building a house. You're building something that is going to be tried by God's fire. Every act that you do out of a desire to please the Lord, empty of self, an act of genuine submission to the Lord, that is precious stone, that is gold, that is silver, things that will not be consumed by the fire. But when you act out of a desire to self, to self-gratify because you care about others' opinions about yourself and you do things because you want to make sure you're not seen in a bad light or whatever it may be, that is an act that falls short of the glory of God, that falls short of pleasing the Lord, and therefore that is something that's called wood, hay, and stubble. And if you push wood, hay, and stubble through a fire, it's singed up. It's burnt up. And the Bible says, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. It will be revealed by fire. It's a very interesting thought here as we come to Matthew chapter number 6. The battle we all face, the battle we all face is this battle of whether or not we're going to please self or please God. Because we're afraid of what others will say if we don't. Let me say second or thirdly, very quickly, our aim. You say, what is our aim as a believer? Very simply, again, it is to please the Lord. Do you know something? If your aim is to please the Lord in all things, you cannot go wrong. You will not go wrong. As a believer, if our aim is to please God in all things, whether we eat, drink, or whatsoever we do, to bring all glory and honor to the Lord, if that's our genuine heart's goal and mind, then you cannot go wrong in life. That doesn't mean bad things won't happen to you. It don't mean there won't be difficulty, but you can trust that you're following exactly what God has. Why? Because your aim is to please Him. Think about Christ. Think about the Lord Jesus when you consider our aim. While the Lord Jesus was here on this earth, what did he say in John 5, 30? He came to do not his own will, but the will of him that sent him. He didn't come to do his own will. He came to do the will of his Father. His work was to do the work of the Father. The Bible says in Philippians, he became obedient even unto death. The Lord Jesus was, is a perfect picture of this idea of one aim, one purpose, to please God with my life. Now, you and I, until we're in heaven, we, we, we'll still fall short of that many different times, but it doesn't mean He's not our aim and our goal. We can see Christ. The Lord Jesus emptied Himself, became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. He gave His life so that you and I might live. All out of desire, why? Why did he do it? Why did he hang and die on the cross? To be obedient to the heavenly Father. What was his one aim? His one aim was to please God. Can I ask you this morning, what is your aim in your righteous act? What is your goal in your giving? When it says here, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of men, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Our one aim, our one goal is very simple. God. That's it. It is to please Him. Our Maker, our Creator, the One who loved us, the One who gives us life in Him. We have life and breath. My aim is God. And the Bible says here that if my aim is anything less than that, and I have no reward. You had here a picture of what was going on. Pharisees and those religious leaders of the day, they would do their alms. You say, what is alms? It's, it's helping people, done often financially, money, time, need, whatever it was. It was helping those who were in need. And the Pharisees were doing it so that people would see them. They were giving, sometimes large portions of money, so that others might reverence them and think more highly 
about them. You see this all throughout Scripture. And the Lord Jesus gives the exact opposite command to the believer. He says, therefore, in verse number 2, When thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. The life of a Christian is not to be our service so that men glorify us. We don't do our acts of righteousness so that men pat us on the back. We don't do our acts of righteousness because we want to please and make others think more highly of us, even at the expense of our own will being sacrificed. We, we operate out of a desire to please the Lord. That leads us sometimes to sacrifice. That leads us sometimes to give and give abundantly. That leads us sometimes to being empty of self. Absolutely. But it's all out of a motive to please the Lord and not men. And we're not to sound the trumpet. Hey, look at me. We're not to look for the pat on the back. We're not to be the people that are wanting to be the ones that are glorified. No, we're to do it, the Bible says in verse 4, in secret. I love it when people come to me and they say they want to help and I always come up to them afterwards and say, thank you for whatever they might have been doing at the church. And they say, well, I didn't do it for you. And some people might get offended. Oh, well, I said, thank you. you didn't, but you said you didn't do it for me. No, no. They said, I'm doing it for the Lord. Can I tell you, that's a far better motive than trying to please me. If you'll please the Lord and I'm aiming to please the Lord, then our hearts will unite together. We'll be united under Christ. Why? Because we're both desiring to please the Lord. And those desires do not conflict. But it says here, he says, Do not sound a trumpet before men as the hypocrites do in the synagogue. The word hypocrite is, was a, a word used to describe an actor, somebody playing another role. Somebody who was in the theater and they took on a role of whoever it may be in the play and they were acting like somebody, but they were not that someone. And here the Lord says, do not be a hypocrite. Do not be acting like you are something when you are nothing on the inside. You'll see how seriously the Lord takes it in Acts chapter number 5. Ananias and Sapphira, they tried to give. They gave. It wasn't wrong to give. But they gave and they lied about the amount that they were going to give. They gave a portion. They made it seem like they were giving all, but really they kept back a portion for themselves. And they received at the moment, at that time, the praise. People looked and thought, wow, what a sacrificial gift. But then the Lord came back and visited them. And the Apostle Peter, through the Apostle Peter, and they were confronted in their sin. And don't you know that the Lord struck them dead at their door? Why? Because of their hypocrisy. Well, the Lord takes it very seriously. Am I saying today that the Lord will strike you dead as a hypocrite? I don't know. I'm not saying that. We all have a bit of hypocrisy in our heart and mind. But I do say this. The Lord does take it very seriously if you rob Him of His glory. If you, rob, if you seek to take glory for yourself rather than glory for the one who gives reward. Notice here, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Talking about the hypocrite. They have their reward. They may get the praise of men for a time. They'll get it for a season. They'll get the people patting them on the back. But they'll also get that response one day when they stand before the Almighty God. And they stand and they say, well, haven't I done many wonderful works in your name? Haven't I in your name cast out demons? Haven't I in your name done this and that? And the Lord will say on that day, the saddest words in all the Bible, Bible depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Why? The Bible even goes on to tell us, we heard about it a few weeks ago, he told the Pharisees, you cannot be saved because you want the honor of men above the honor that comes from God. And that's the reason why they're seeking the praise of men above the praise of God. God says this about our service to him. It's to be done in secret. We're not keeping tabs of what we do and what we give to God. No, 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 no. We're giving it out of a willing heart. Notice what he says in verse number three. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand doeth. 
it is so private and so secret that your left hand doesn't even know what your right hand is doing. In other words, you're, you're giving, you're serving, you're acting, whatever it may be in time of need, you're doing it out of a love for the Father. You're doing it out of a desire to please God, not to please men. And therefore, you're, not, you're giving willingly, out of a willing heart. You're not keeping tabs and saying, well, Lord, I gave you this, now I'm looking for some return. Lord, I, I designated this amount of my time. I gave this much out of my pocket. I, I did this. No, 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 no. I, I did it so secret that I, I almost even forget what I did. It was just out of a desire to be obedient to the Lord. And the wonderful thing is this, that thine alms, in verse number four, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. It's amazing. People will see the reward openly in your life if you keep your acts of righteousness done in secret and obedience to Him. That doesn't mean I run around and I, I try to make sure nobody sees anything that I'm doing. No, no, no. It's simply a heart, a, a heart with a desire to please God. That's what it means to be, be done in secret. My motive is to please the Lord. Oh, people may look and they may see something good. I'll try to always deflect and point to the Lord. That's all the Lord's doing. But my desire, my motive is not to get a reward from men. I'm not trying to extend my influence in people's lives. I'm not trying to bring praise to me. I'm trying simply to bring praise to God. And as I bring praise to the Lord, He, the Bible says in James 4, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. The lifting up is the Lord's doing. It's the Lord's work. My job is to humble myself before Him. It's to serve Him in secret, to be content to live in His presence. In His presence. Living in a way that is honoring and pleasing to Him. And guess what? I'll have a reward, both on this earth and in eternity. He'll reward thee openly, I believe, in this life, and also one day when I stand before him, I'll be able to cast my crown at his feet. Hear those wonderful words that he'll say to the faithful, why? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. It may have hurt this morning as you examined your own heart, but can I tell you, in order to get victory over this, you have to be real with yourself. You have to look into the mirror and ask yourself the question, why? Why do I do what I do? Why do I go? Why do I, why do I read? Why do I pray? Why do I serve? Why do I sacrifice? What's the reason? If it's anything short than the pleasing of God, then it's all of empty reward. I couldn't think of a more sad life than to spend your whole life in service to the Lord and at the end have absolutely nothing to show. Why? Because at the end of the day, it was out of desire, no matter how noble, no matter how humble, no matter how kind it may have been. And I'm not saying acts of kindness aren't good, but I can say this, it will have no reward. Why? Because it wasn't done out of an act and desire to please God. May God examine your heart, my heart. We have a loving God who gave absolutely everything for you and for me to have eternal life. He gave His own Son, the Lord Jesus, to bleed and die on the cross for you and for I. He, he died perf the perfect, the just for the unjust. He made a way for you and I who knew sin to be made clean and righteous before a holy God. He shed His own blood for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave all so that you might know Him. It is only, Paul says, our reasonable service that we might live in a way that is honoring and pleasing to Him. May God help you. May God help me to take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Rather, may we do our alms, our good service, our work for the sight of the Father, which seeth in secret, and Himself shall reward thee openly. Will you bow with me in a word of prayer? Almighty God, we praise Thee and thank Thee for this day. We thank Thee for Thy Word and pray that Thou would apply it to our hearts. Lord, we confess where it's so easy to get caught in this trap of self-gratification, of trying to please ourselves instead of Thee. And we pray, O oh Lord, that Thou would deliver us from this trap. We know that, Lord, Thou art a loving, a just, and a holy God. 
and that it is through knowing Thee and Thee alone that we can have eternal life. It is through, Lord, serving Thee that we can have true peace and joy within, knowing the Lord Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Oh, Lord, the devil, the rule of this world has blinded people's eyes. Lord, the rule of this world has, Lord, put lies in the hearts and minds of people who say simply things like he did in the garden. That's not what thou hast said. Lord, trying to, to doubt thy motives, but yet we see in thy word how true and lovely and humble and, and wonderful thy motives were, Lord, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Please, Lord, open up hearts and minds this morning. Help us, Lord, to examine ourselves. Help us, Father, to, Lord, bring a life that is pleasing and honoring to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'll take your hymn books, we'll stand and sing our, our final hymn, hymn number 344. Great God of wonder, all thy praise, all thy ways, display the attributes divine, but countless acts of pardoning grace beyond thine other wonder shine. We'll stand and sing hymn 344. Please let me know. I'd love to be able to pray with you and help you and encourage you. But uh, let's ask the Lord to help us be back in His house this evening for our 6 o'clock worship meeting. Pray for those who are unwell and um, pray for the campers that are going to camp this week and pray that the Lord will bless them. We'll be dismissed this, uh, this morning in a word of prayer. I'd like to ask Andy to please close us in a word. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we give thanks for what we've heard this morning, Lord. Please help us to put into practice, Lord, and remember by the Spirit of the Lord these precious truths and expositions from the Sermon on the Mount. We think of how we are told, Lord, to follow in thy precious footsteps. We think, Lord Jesus, of how that went, uh, was becoming very popular, Lord, with the masses. I'll just go into a mountain mm. for to pray, Lord, all night long. Amen. So help us, Lord, to follow 
in thine footsteps to examine, Lord, our motivation from why we do this, that, and the other, why we think these things, why we say certain things, Lord, and afterwards we look to regret what we've done or said. So keep us close to thee, Lord. Keep us convicted each day by thy convicting power of the Spirit Amen. of the Lord. Help us to get the balance, Lord, with good works, not to be seen of men, Lord. Yes, sir. But we do realize as well, Lord, things we uh, do cannot be avoided, Lord. But it's our motivation that counts, Lord, at the end of the day, to please thee, Lord, and not to please ourselves or our fellow man as well. Jesus said, Lord, let us love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Then thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. With the square self, Lord, coming last on the list. Please help us, Lord, and help those who have not been with us this morning, Lord, to have their spiritual portion for the day. Those who are ill, Lord, those away on holiday, keep them safe, Lord, and bring them back and heal those who need it. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.